Hello and welcome back to another satisfactory video. First off, I want to say Happy New Year to all you amazing people. And second, I want to apologize for the lack of uploads over the past couple weeks as I was away on holiday and I was only able to make a few videos for the first week. But now that I'm back home, I'm streaming and ready to make a couple of videos a week. I'm very excited for this new year and it comes at a perfect time in our save because I want to cleanse our save file of all the subpar building that I did and get us down to just what we need. This includes deleting our starter factory, our starter steel, and our starter oil factories along with the starter power that we use for coal plants. We also have a few small projects like our quartz factory, our caterium ingot factory, and where we made our noblisks. But the thing that's going to take the longest is revamping our rail network because there's some items on there I no longer want on the blueprints and there's some stuff I would like to add and upgrade. And yes, that means we're replacing all the blueprints we placed on before. And we're finally going to add all of the rails to the rail line. So sit back, grab a snack, and let's go over the mass delete we're about to do. And just like that, we have deleted the starter factory. Now you'll notice not everything here is gone and that's because it wasn't necessarily part of the starter factory. And there are still some resources here I need to keep for just a little bit. So I have some floating storages, don't mind those. These ones here are holding heavy frames, computers, circuit boards, high speed connectors, and I think one of them has concrete in there. We're not producing any of those anymore. I want to make sure I have the storage available so that when I need to build manufacturers or something that needs computers or high-speed connectors, I have the storage still. And I feel like it's maybe less time efficient to move all this stuff over to our new material factory. So for now, we're just going to hold these here. And the same goes for this little area. I have some excess, I think, quick wire, AI limiters, hopper sheets, things like that that we're not quite producing over there yet. But the rest of this area will be dealt with and removed but it is on the lowest priority we still have to get rid of our oil and our steel factories and with the power of editing we have deleted the steel factory and our starter oil factory now again there are residual storage buildings like the train stations and again some industrial storage containers we will worry about removing those later but for now i'm just trying to focus on getting the buildings gone and if you remember we had a small quartz production right about here with some trucks bringing it into our original starter factory and that is now given the delete and if we do a 180, boom, we have no more coal plant here. I figure we might as well just delete both of them because they're both right next to each other. Now this does take away from some of our power, but again, we were producing, I think 23,450 megawatts and 20,000 of that is coming from the fuel plant. So I think we're okay. Okay, and after doing all of that deleting and whatnot, I kind of wanted to be a little bit productive and build something, maybe change something. So I decided to kind of brainstorm the best way of dealing with our starter aluminum. Now we will be keeping this build uh, here, but it's not finished obviously. It does need to be finished but i figured i didn't want to just rebuild it again so we're gonna just revamp this and try to finish it and the original dilemma i was having with the aluminum production here is that we need copper ingots here to send into make the alkaline sheets and we really don't need a lot of sheets honestly at least right now and so the amount of copper we need is like less than 20 ingots per minute i think and so I was having a really hard time justifying bringing a copper node that's really far all the way over here just to plug in for a few ingots. So I decided to kind of change my plan for the original material factory. And we actually are going to add in copper over there and kind of make the train do a double time. This train will be dropping off alclad sheets and casings at the material factory and in turn also picking up ingots produced over there, bringing them back over here. That way we don't have to add anything extra other than like utilize a cargo station here. And we're also going to make sure we still have the coal coming in on this train. So instead of having multiple train stations, it's just going to be one train station with a couple trains coming in and out here. And I think it should work pretty well. Hopefully <laughs> we will find out. But I figured that was the most streamlined way of getting copper in here versus maybe exporting aluminum ingots and then producing them somewhere else. It just seemed a little messy that way. Okay, and hopping back over here at the material factory, you might see that some stuff has changed and that is me adding copper into our production line. Now, I originally didn't want to because I didn't want to have a bunch of different materials coming in if I didn't have to, but I decided that we obviously have the space and we need to fill that. So uh, might as well just throw copper in here a little bit at least. So we are producing sheets for our own storage now but we are also producing the excess ingots I need to send up to train stations on the second floor up there. And that is where it'll get picked up when the aluminum stuff is dropped off. Now, it really didn't fill up that much, but it does add a little bit more 
production into the open spaces, but I'm assuming this will happen a few more times where we buff a certain production line or something like that and we'll start filling up the space. And then on top of that, I decided to um, add in another bus line to fill this area. And I think now this whole production like layer is all filled. I think it looks okay. It's not my favorite, just the way the spacing worked out and whatnot, but it does kind of work and it gives us this little uh, space right here to also kind of play around with and do something with as well. And it's still funny, I have this little sign here still that tells me I still need more iron. So I have 480 out of the 950 I need. I think I didn't have power shards at the time, but we'll have to look into that at, in the future. I'm getting some grapple. This hurts my eyes. We're going to look away. Moving on, we're going to have to make a list of all the little stuff that I'm going to have to do to try to, 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 try to keep track of all the things that we got to do because there's a lot of little stuff that still needs to be done. And it's a little hard to do all the little stuff and make big projects at the same time. <sighs> Man, one day, one day. But the next thing that I think we are ready for is the, the updating of the blueprint for the rail line. Now, it's not going to be a crazy update. It's not going to drastically change. I can't look that way. But it does need to be updated for the outlets because I think I only had Mark 1 outlets on there, which is kind of a problem on the original blueprint. So we need to make sure we have at least Mark 2, if not Mark 3 on there. And then also, I want to get rid of the hyper tubes that were mounted on the sides, which honestly... We didn't really use that much and they now just get in the way of the train signals. So we need to get rid of that. I want to add lights on the bottom portion, which I don't think are on there right now. So the road in which the trucks drive on will also be lit. I think once we have all that done, we shouldn't have to change it too much because the idea is that we add other blueprints on the sides and on top and whatnot to kind of beef it up a little bit more. So it's just the foundation of what will hopefully become a worldwide and very versatile train network. Okay, and this is the basically updated variant of the previous blueprint. So we don't have any hyper tubes on the sides now, which is pretty good actually. And I added the uh, street lights inside the support pillar, just like I did on the second floor before. And I upgraded the outlets and I only did Mark II because honestly, I don't really want to have a problem with um, high speed connectors yet just because we're not producing them. So I decided to opt out of the uh, Mark III just for uh, future material sake for now. And uh, yeah, we should be all sorts of good now with this blueprint. And then I also decided to on our straight pieces, our non-support pieces, I made sure to make a two meter and a one meter variant of those, or a two, sorry, two foundation and one foundation wide, just so when we are uh, bringing them in, we don't have to place a three and then delete, you know, two of the foundation. It'll just help with building, uh, just seemed like the smart idea. And so building now to like replace all of the blueprints we've already made should go hopefully quicker and doesn't actually take that long in general. Um, the longest part is actually connecting each um, support pillar just because you can't like connect your wiring obviously to each blueprint. Uh, you have to do it manually, which is like the only downside, but it's still building way faster. So no worries there. But yeah, I've been rambling for a little bit. Let's get into trying to build this uh, or replace all of our rails pretty much. This is probably going to take a while. And just real quick for you guys, I'm just going to show you why I'm not showing you me replacing these blueprints because all I'm doing is I'm placing blueprints down like this and then once I get close to the next set of blueprints of the old ones I go ahead and delete a bunch of them like this and I don't think I'm alone here in saying that I don't think this is super entertaining so I'm just kind of showing you why I'm not showing all of this stuff but trust me this is definitely taking a while but I think the thing that took the longest was figuring out how I wanted to reroute the train line over here because they weren't actually connected before and they do need to be connected for the aluminum train to function. It ended previously all the way over there and started right about here. So I was trying to line it up the best I could and I think I did a pretty close job, but it's not exactly perfect, but I think it'll do the job just fine. You really have to be looking very close to see that they're not absolutely perfectly aligned. And the other thing that's gonna take some time is just getting a ramp blueprint made because we actually don't have one of those. So I will need to make one of those, but I'm waiting till I get all of the straight lines done first. But so far we've gone all the way from the starter factory all the way over there and at least halfway through the canyon all the way over here. 
So we're definitely making good progress. We just got to keep getting at it. And believe it or not, all the way down to the material factor from where our starter factory was, we have replaced all of these straight line blueprints and supports and gotten power hooked up to all of them. The only thing we have left to do for that is now the ramped areas, which honestly shouldn't take super long. Once I get a correct blueprint made, it won't take super long to replace those ramps. But I will say at the end of the stream, I did get a little distracted. Somebody finally got me to unlock the Cybertruck on stream and uh, we had a little fun and I'll give you a little clip of what happened. Oh, it's smooth. I didn't, I thought it was like way more bumpy. Oh, well, it likes to spin out though. <laughs> Bro, this thing is crazy. It makes this, oh my gosh. 184, what not? Oh, you can't turn. Oh, we're drifting side, keep it on, yep. We're good. Jeez. <laughs> Why is this so fast? <laughs> I have to try to make the jump. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I hope I don't fall out. Oh, yep. Make it, make it. Oh, no, we're sliding. Oh, God. Okay. Nice. That was gentle. Oh, we got a long straight again. GTA jumps, yeah. Mission passed. 207 to 9 to 11. Okay, yeah. The back end, when it hits the railing, does go over it. Okay, so just a quick couple things I want to show you guys. I worked out a blueprint to do our ramps. Now, I was going to do a blueprint for the whole section where we could do like in the increments of three, two, and one in distance. So we could just place down a bunch of blueprints. The only issue with doing that is that when we place the blueprints, the pillars don't actually line up to the edge. So I can place as many blueprints as I want, but there'll be gaps. So I'm going to have to delete the sides anyways. Only like reason we have the blueprints is to kind of expedite building the uh, like the guards on the side. Everything else is just like, it's just foundation. So I think what we're gonna do is use the blueprints on the first one to where it lines up nice and tight at the bottom here. Now um, I can kind of show you what I mean real quick. So when we wanna place this blueprint, we can get it into blueprint mode and it'll snap just fine. But when we go into blueprint mode again, it likes to drop down a notch. And I think just the way that, or like the position it was built in the uh, designer, it doesn't like to, it doesn't like to basically snap properly. But the issue you can see is that this border doesn't actually go to the end. And so if we were to snap these blueprints multiple times down the way, It'll always have gaps like this to where we have to fill anyways. So I think it's going to really not be that much of a time saver. Um, and it's not going to be too much of a headache because we, whichever way we build it, whether it's with the blueprints or by manual, we still have to uh, manually merge the top as well. So I'm just going to stick with the uh, like one foundation like depth and then we'll just uh, manually build off of that. I think it'll work just fine. But I just want to explain why that we're not going to be having a perfect blueprint for everything on uh, uh, the ramps here but the other thing that I wanted to go over is that I figured out kind of I think how we're gonna do the corners on all of these T junction or actually this will be like any T junction or if we end up doing roundabouts as well we'll probably use a method like this but basically um, all I have to do is I just have to uh, end a railing on a foundation line here so this is where our like curves will branch off of so you can see the junction on the rail here is in line with where the, the pillars end on the side here. And then I actually don't know if it's still here, but yeah, I think it's gone. All we have to do then is when we do that on both sides, we can just grab a beam and uh, kind of diagonally zoop it across. And then we can just add our pillars in and uh, it looks like much better than it did before. I'm not 100% set on it, but I think it's the best option I have right now. And it doesn't take a ton of time to set up. The other bonus is that uh, we can easily line up our half foundations. So there's no crazy clipping going on and everything's covered and I think that's going to look the best in the long run. And now the task that is I think the last thing we have to do for us to be able to start setting up our train system for the aluminum factory to the material factory is actually like set up the rails. So I'm going to start banging that out real quick. And with a little bit of editing, we are now over at the material factory with our rails kind of all ran down this way. The only thing we have left to do before we set up the uh, train line is to connect it into the factory. Now, the only dilemma I'm having is I don't know which way I want to go. I don't know if we want to continue this way and wrap around or if we want to have a like a side road sh uh, like jut out that's like not really 
a highway part, but it kind of just juts off the side, enters in the backside of the uh, material factory, which might be better in the long run. So I'm kind of leaning towards that, but I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm going to kind of figure that out and uh, we'll come back in just a second. Okay. And as you can kind of see here, I started setting up the aluminum train network. Uh, or the line into the highway system right here. And if you go all the way down to the end, you can see it comes all the way down here onto its own little line here, which again, we're gonna design and everything, but I kind of needed to get the spacing correct. So that's what is going on right here. We can follow this all the way down over here and it merges super far in the distance over there. You can see the rails. So the merge is all done and technically we only need to add like a border maybe and supports and this would be good. Obviously, we got to shore up the corners, things like that, but overall, not too shabby. But we have an entrance side and an exit side. And then after we kind of get our train line support all done, we can actually kind of finish up this wall and this factory, the outside of it will be kind of done for the most part, which is kind of exciting. Okay, and down here in the depths of the logistic floor, I guess this is the upper one. I now have rerouted uh, some of our uh, logistics. So we no longer sync them on the top here. So we can get rid of this awesome sync and I'll show you where they go. If we come all the way down our stairs here and we're still getting graphical bugs, gotta love that. Jump down here and you can see right about here that I have some awesome sync set up. I don't know if this is gonna be enough. I hope it will be, but uh, we have four awesome sinks and we have a couple of different lines. This one is for everything's being produced technically in the factory right now. And then this one is our excess of aluminum uh, which obviously is not being sunk right now. Once those storages fill up, they will be. I ran that train line and it is now picking up copper from over in this factory, taking it over to the aluminum factory and picking up uh, the sheets and casings and bringing those bad boys over here. So you can see our copper is still moving just fine. We should be able to hop up here and show you this train over here. So as you can see, copper is not building up too heavily right now. We're only uh, exporting 60 items per minute. It's probably just the excess of the machines. And then these two middle ones will be the aluminum being brought in. And then this top one is actually a nothing bay. It has no, no purpose here, but it is a placeholder for the other uh, transition, which has coal coming in on the first one. So we're just leaving this one empty. And the nice thing about that is that we do have the option for in the future, if we ever want to no longer use that coal node down at the south that we're using right now, uh, we can always buff our coal intake here and send it into a train station here and it'll go just like it does to the other train station and it would work exactly the same. So we do have the option to switch where our coal comes from. And speak of the devil, we have some aluminum products being brought in right now. Now, I don't think we're making alkaline sheets yet because I think I do need to uh, just double check the saturation of the water over in the aluminum plant. So I might need to uh, go flush the tubes out just because it's been sitting there. So it's probably built up a little bit too much water. So I just have to flush out the system and then it'll work perfectly fine. But yeah, all of our production now is pretty much done. But as our train leaves to go do its job and transfer items, um, I think that's going to mark the end of this episode. I really wanted to try to get one out on, on time for the uh, day I set, which is the 11th and um, currently on a time crunch. Um, and I don't want to just show that like, hey, I'm just holding delete the whole time because uh, there's still a lot of stuff that I will be deleting between the stream and then maybe some off stream as well. But I think our next uh, video will actually be the start of our next project. And I haven't fully decided what it will be. Uh, I have to figure that out today, actually. Rest assured that the next video on the Let's Play here will be the start of the next big project because we have a lot of catching up to do as we're not producing any computer parts. So that's like circuit boards, computers, high speed connectors, any of that stuff. We're not making any of that. We're also not making heavy frames or crystal oscillators. So there's a lot that we got to get done and catch uh, to like catch up on so that we can kind of get our uh, storage facility fully operational to where it should be. And we can start getting into the really fun stuff in the tier seven and eight. But like I said, that's gonna do it for me. If you guys did enjoy, please leave a like, subscribe, all that jazz. Let me know what you thought and any feedback. And uh, just as a quick disclaimer, I do now have an open discord for uh, you guys to join. I'm gonna leave a link if YouTube allows me in the uh, either the comments or the description and uh, you can join off that. But if it doesn't let you, you can always go to my Twitch channel and I'll have a, both uh, a panel and a link I think on my profile should be totally fine to work and you can join the discord that way. I'm hoping to use the uh, discord for community polls and events and such along with 
uh, some extra perks for soon to be channel members and Twitch subscribers, things like that. So be on the lookout for that. But yeah, until uh, until next time, <laughs> have a good morning, evening or afternoon and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. I'm slick with words, tongue sharp, you left in thirds. You pitching verbs, I knock it out, I'm flipping birds. While smoking herbs, I'm blocking out what often hurts. I'm moving herds, it's me, my family, money merge. We crave the day that we can finally start to splurge.